Jones, they must be windy beach huts. They must be right on the sea edge. Wow, they're amazing! <laughs> like, doll's houses. Some of them have seen better days. Pubs and places like that are closed, don't they? Two oh, there, yeah. one next to the other. <laughs> or huts. I might just ride up there. It was still early when we got to Mablethorpe and it was nice to see cafes opening but we weren't ready to stop quite yet. Mablethorpe is the latest of seven seaside towns to get a time and tide bell. Despite its appearance, it's a modern concept. The first was installed at Appledore in Devon in 2009. The one at Mablethorpe was installed in 2019 and more are planned. Mablethorpe Seal Sanctuary and Wildlife Centre. I mean, the seals only come here, what was it, in November and December anyway, isn't it? And they give birth here. Yes. On that rugged beach. Yeah, amazing. That would be a sight to see. Cool, beautiful cherry blossoms. Yeah. There are several areas along this east coast where seals come to have their pups. The Mablethorpe Seal Sanctuary and Wildlife Centre works to rehabilitate sick and injured seals. It is located close to the seal breeding colony at Donanook and many of the animals it rescues are young seals born there. As well as the seals at the sanctuary, there are other animals including gibbons, meerkats and birds of prey. First, to avoid the potholes. <laughs> Howden's pullover car park. Oh, it's the oh, sea nice. is a long way out there. It is, yeah. Just marshy land. Yeah. Adjacent to the sea, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to go exploring Donanook National Nature Reserve. Wow, so this is just more marshland, look. The Royal Air Force used this area as a bombing practice, so they would drop bombs onto it. They would have to set out targets, I guess, and practice dropping bombs and hitting the targets. So this is the Humber Estuary we're coming up to now. It's the North Sea, but as it goes round, it um, goes into Hull and the River Humber. <laughs>
This is Cleethorpes. It appears to be an unremarkable place, but after a little bit of scratching below the surface, like many northern towns, it has a story. It's more than just the usual boom and bust seaside town struggling to reinvent itself for the 21st century. There's some rich and relatively recent cultural significance here that's best summed up by telling you a little bit about the Winter Gardens. Unfortunately, we can't take you there today because it was demolished in 2007 and the site used as a car park for 10 years until these truly unremarkable townhouses were built in 2018. It was built in the 1930s as an Art Deco style amusement hall, the Olympia. It was financed by the compensation which local railway worker George Eyre received from an accident that resulted in his legs being amputated. George's wife Rose owned the land on which the Olympia was erected. After the post-war refurbishment in December 1947, the establishment was reopened as the Winter Gardens. It held a range of events from rock gigs to tea dances. It attracted a lot of big names on their ascendancy to fame and gave a platform to bands and fans shunned from elsewhere. In particular, during the punk rock era, the venue hosted the ostracised Sex Pistols. By all accounts, this was the place to be throughout the 70s and 80s, headlining acts such as Susie Quattro, Roxy Music, Queen, ACDC, Genesis, Black Sabbath, Hawkwind, The Stranglers, Thin Lizzy, Dr. Feelgood, The Clash, Dexy's Midnight Runners, The Damned, Elton John and, of course, The Sex Pistols. Northern Soul events took place at the Winter Gardens and established it as one of the major venues for Northern Soul, up there with Wigan Casino and The Twisted Wheel. This unlikely fusion of British mod culture and black American soul music with a heavy beat and fast tempo was unique to the English Midlands and North. Something going on there. Lots of people waiting for something. Cleethorpes expanded following the linking of the town by railway with industrial towns in Yorkshire. Cleethorpes Pier, that appears to have been much like the Winter Gardens, opened in 1873. At 3pm on the 22nd of September 1956, a UFO was spotted for more than half an hour off of Cleethorpes coast. So this is the Humber, isn't it? I can see the other side now. Yeah. It's choppy, isn't it? Yeah, it's choppy, very choppy. Oh, Ooh, look at it. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, some movement in there. In 2021, Cleethorpes was named as the second best seaside destination in the UK that's reachable by train. Quite an accolade when you think of all the contenders. They said the walking time from the train station to the beach couldn't be closer, just across the road. Well, they were right about that. Hmm. It's actually a railway station, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's the railway station. It's the main line. Well, that's rather convenient, straight to the seafront. Yeah. Cleethorpe seamlessly merges into Grimsby. We were hoping to take a closer look at its famous port, but were denied access. Uh, you can't go in. Can't go in, maybe. Maybe they'll let us. Shall we ask? Don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You're right. We're we're on a coastal tour of Britain. We're trying around the whole coastline. We put it into Google Maps. It said we could drive around here, but we can't by the looks of it. 
There we are, I'll turn it around, I'll go over there. Oh, hang on, I've got someone coming. Shall I go round? Yeah, 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 cheers. The port once had the world's largest fishing fleet, but since 1960 it's been decimated. The Cod Wars denied UK access to Icelandic fishing grains and the European Union used its common fisheries policy to parcel out fishing quotas to other European countries. The sudden demise of the industry brought an end to a way of life and community that had lasted for generations. The loss of the fishing industry brought severe economic and social problems for the town. Huge numbers became redundant, highly skilled in jobs that no longer existed and struggled to find work ashore. Today, the town faces the challenges of a post-industrial economy on top of the decline in its fishing industry. The East Marsh Ward of the town is the second most deprived in the country according to government statistics. Until now, urban decline hasn't been this evident, but it will not be the first time we experience this kind of deprivation on this northeast coast. In future episodes, we will see possibly the poorest areas in the whole of England. We really are starting to head north now. We're about the same or even slightly north of places like Doncaster, Manchester and Sheffield. We're southerners, but over the years we've gained a huge appreciation for England's north. Years ago, we devoted several family holidays to exploring the north. We're fascinated by its economic and social history and its stunning countryside. Look. Oh yeah. And there it is. Looming large. It's quite dark, isn't it? In colour. Yeah, yeah, it is dark. Telling you how to manoeuvre your motorbike. Are we all right on the left? Who do I think We're I up am? Behind. Yeah. Yeah. Go over to the right here, but yeah, that's perfect. Stop there. 
Oh, uh, careful, I'm plugged in. In the next episode, we'll be crossing the Humber Bridge and making our way back to the sea. Thanks for watching, especially if you've got this far. Please like and comment, and if you want to keep up with our adventures, subscribe so you don't miss future episodes.